Good morning, everybody. My name is Herbert Blankenstein. I'm a technology journalist and I do IT. I work for BNR News Radio. One of my jobs is making radio programs. I also write for papers and magazines. Welcome to this customer success session. We're going to have a talk with a distinguished technology leader, and that will be Nicolas Delord, or in his native language, French, Nicolas Delors. Let's see if I can get his slide. There you go. Title of his talk is uh, ADP, how ADP is building an app a week, products, not prototypes. Nicolas Delors. Hi. Hi. Please sit down. Um, ADP stands for Automated Data Processing, right? That's true. Is that, uh, the, is that abbreviation still meaningful? It's from a some time ago, of course. I mean, the core uh, business is, is payroll. Yes. It has been uh, payroll, from salary the administration, beginning. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So um, we've been expanding that to, I mean, a global HR. So that includes yes. um, so payroll, time, uh, taxes, benefits, yes, all, all, all of, and talent all as well. Can you give me some metrics about the company? What I know is it has an annual turnover of no less than $10 billion. That's so right. It's a big company. It's a big company. Um, I have some figures here. Uh, so, yeah, it's almost $11 billion uh, last fiscal year. Uh, it's 660,000 clients worldwide, small businesses, uh, large businesses, as well I, as multinational companies. Um, inter inter interesting fact, um, we pay one of six workers in the U.S. Yes. So it is likely that also in the room, people are paid by, by ADP. ADP. Yeah. Uh, I know those ADP people there are paid okay. by ADP. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's one figure I'm, I'm very interested in here is, is the number of employees, yes. 55,000. Mm -hmm. Because it's my, um, as an innovator, it, it is my potential uh, user base to try new products. You call yourself an innovator. Um, your job title is creative technologist. So that's not the official uh, job title. It's an unofficial job title. Yeah, because the, uh, 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 the official doesn't mean anything. It's like a kind of a director of product management. OK. OK. And so it's like the usual kind of job title. It wasn't yeah, sufficient so, so what I do is I do technology, and I also do uh, product management. Yeah. So it's really hard to find a title. So I started with hands-on PO because I was a PO that was building things. And now I'm a creative technologist. But OK. Um, and uh, what you do at uh, ADP, uh, the, the, the lab, or may I call it that, is the uh, ADP product incubator. Yeah, so the ADP. So uh, you incubate products. Yeah. It's so also very vague. The ADP product incubator, it's, it's a very small team yeah. uh, in New York City. At How the, small is it? It's, it's four people. Four people? Yeah, at the um, ADP uh, Innovation Lab in New York City. And our mission is to create software very fast. And then to validate the software very fast, so we put it in front of you users. You came to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> and And... And to maximize our chances to, to get things right at the first, very first attempt, what we do is we use um, behavioral economics. Behavioral economy? Yeah. So we look into the intrinsic motivation of people. So in, in the first place, why would they use our product? So it involves a lot of psychology. And so we have one person in the team that... that Take care of that. But um, the, the, the products uh, we're talking about uh, are software products, right? Yeah, that's right. So could you name an example? What's uh, an example of the kind of products you make? Um, can I just make a pause here and present the team? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because, and then we can go back to the okay, anything examples. Uh, that's how one of the, um, our behavioral economists in the team describe what we do. 
is the, say that we're designing solutions for people that they are and not that they want them to be. So like, that involves a lot of psychology again, and it's, we focus really on the users. So the people as a, yeah, I, yeah. I understand, yeah. Um, so the, I, I wanted to show the team because it's very unusual. Uh, we have one behavioral economist. We have one field trial researcher. Uh, so she's, she's in charge of finding a group of users to test our product. Within the company? Within the company. Mm -hmm. um, because we deliver a product every week, and so we need new users every week. And, and so, for example, last week, she, was, uh, she made uh, 100 phone calls to get feedback from users who have been using a product for, uh, for 12 weeks. All right. Uh, yeah. And then I'm the product builder. You're the only product builder on only the team. Only product builder in the team. And then we have a manager, which is our uh, master. Do you even need a manager with such a small team? Yeah, I mean, he has the vision. So <laughs> okay. he's a very, he, Somebody he's, has he's, really, the vision. he's yeah. really involved in the design. Okay. Uh, and he's also our salesperson in the company, so we can get funding and go to the next sure. step. OK. So um, what, what uh, products do you develop? Can you give me a couple of examples? Yeah, so we do um, launched a um, really big survey in February globally at ADP. Uh, it was a, a survey that were allowing employees to rate their manager. So rate the, the manager? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's How not good or bad is he or she? <laughs> Yeah, but it was it's like it, that. Yeah, it was a just plus and minus. It was on a grade. It was based on twelve behaviors that a leader should have, and that was selected by uh, the uh, talent organization at ADP. Okay. Um, and we deployed this survey in a matter of uh, seven sprints to fifty thousand employees in um, ten languages, and. We had a really good response rate, and yet at the end of the survey, each manager got a personalized report with all the uh, rating on all the dimensions. Did they get good grades? Yeah, pretty good yeah, grades. I think there's a bias. Maybe we'll see yeah. over time. It could go down a little bit, but it was the first round. Okay. And um, the follow-up was uh, a a specialized coaching on the on the item they were weak, so they the follow they got a coaching for twelve weeks after that. Okay, that so was, this uh, is about increasing the performance of the managers. Yeah, it's a development tool for okay. managers for leaders. So yeah. that's um, that's one example. That's I have another exa example. Yes, please. And I have a video for for this example that I can um, I can show. Why don't we? Because yeah. uh, it, it, it will uh, make us think clearer about what we're talking about. Yeah, it shows also how we approach yeah, things. That's a good idea. I just, it's, it's, it's about meetings. And as I'm just say a few numbers to introduce the product. So yes. it's a recent study that says that 37% of meetings are poorly, poorly run, that 20% of the time spent in meeting is unproductive. Yeah. And it's uh, a cost of 37 billion to the Worldwide. dollars to the U.S. economy. Okay, that's, so that's U.S. That's, economy. That's the problem that we want Not to tackle. Not just ADP, but the yeah, U.S. economy. Yeah, th yeah 37 okay. billion. I think many people here are familiar with this uh, performance of meetings. So that's just an animated okay. video. Uh, Do we uh, need sound? Yeah, it's going to start. Hi, I'm Hugh which is convenient for us because my name sounds a lot like you. Now, I have a riddle for you. What is a thumb and really hates a bad meeting? Wait for it, this guy. Hi, I'm Barry Marshall, meeting expert. Let's watch and listen to some of the meetings that Hugh is forced to endure. I realize we are here to whiteboard the new product design. But instead, I'd like to whiteboard the plot of Game of Thrones. What? The story is very complicated. I'm sorry to pull you all away from your very busy schedules, but this is a weekly meeting, so it's very important that we all attend. Let's see, what is there to discuss this week? 
looks like nothing. Okay then, since we're already here, why don't I just make some stuff up? When I called this meeting, I didn't let anyone know what I intended to discuss or accomplish. So now all the attendees have their own ideas and agendas. Hello, chaos and frustration. There is no reason whatsoever for me to be at this meeting. But since I'm here, I am going to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Whoa, those were some bad meetings, am I right? Bad meetings aren't just frustrating. They interfere with our ability to get work done. I guess bad meetings are just an unfortunate part of our lives at work. But don't despair and turn that frown upside down. I am here to tell you that there is a better way. Allow me to introduce you to a new product that is going to help us overcome our meeting woes. It's called Meet Better. Let's take a look at how it works. There is nothing to install. There are no accounts or passwords to create. There is no training needed. Just go to meetbetter.com to get started. Meet Better helps you to identify and communicate the outcomes your meeting is intended to achieve. It makes it easy to create an excellent meeting agenda. It automatically includes your agenda in your meeting invitation. It provides you with a live agenda to help you stay on track during your meetings. It makes it easy to record information shared, decisions reached, and tasks assigned. It lets you send meeting recaps with the click of a button. And it allows you to send confidential and anonymous feedback to the meeting organizer. Sounds great, right? But I know what you're really thinking. You're thinking, that sure seems like a lot of work. But I assure you, it only seems that way. Let's take a closer look. Meet Better doesn't just tell you to create an agenda and then leave you hanging. Rather, it asks you simple questions requiring simple answers. For example, for each agenda item, what is the purpose? Who is the presenter? And how much time is needed? Before you know it, you have a fully developed meeting agenda that is sent to everyone invited to the meeting. The whole process takes less than five minutes and the effects are huge. Because creating a meeting agenda isn't just for you, it makes a huge difference to your meeting attendees too. Now let's see how using Meet Better would have changed those earlier meetings. I'd like to discuss Game of Thrones, but we have a busy agenda, so I will wait until lunch. We wouldn't even be here, because I would have cancelled the meeting when I saw there was no agenda. So you would actually be getting work done. What a concept. When I called this meeting, I let everyone know what I intend to discuss and accomplish. So now all the attendees are ready to use this time productively. Hello, satisfying use of time. Thanks to a well-developed agenda, it will be clear I don't belong here and won't even get invited in the first place. So I will talk and talk and talk and talk somewhere else. How cool was that? Using Meet Better sure does make a big difference. That's why Hugh is going to use Meet Better for all his future meetings. Because when he does, his coworkers feel about him like this. But when he doesn't, his coworkers feel about him like this. And nobody wants that. So be like Hugh and use Meet Better, so your future meetings can end like this. Thank you, Meet Better. Wow. If this works as intended, it's a Nobel Prize material. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> you just, just need to use it. Excuse me? You just need to use it. You just need to use it. Who gets to use it? So for now, it's uh, internal, but yeah. it's actually available if you want to try it. At meetbetter.com. Yeah, right? meetbetter.com. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're, you're deploying this inside the company? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet, no. Okay, so has it been tried? Uh, uh, at EP, yeah. 
At a, yeah, yeah in, we, inside the company. Inside the company, yeah. 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 So what are the uh, first experiences? So we haven't measured the, the effects yet mm -hmm. uh, because we started recently. Uh, what we did was what we, to measure the effect, we sent a survey prior to the, the usage yeah. of the app. And so we are planning to, to send this, a survey about meeting again um, uh, soon so we can, we can see the value so of the So it's still experimental. Product. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the way. So that's the way we work. With all we we base our uh, design on user feedback. So and yeah. we tried. That's why we've been inspired by the Lean startup. We tried to. Uh, that's that, that's a, a thing. Um, a philosophy. Lean startup. Yeah. 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 Because, um, so I've been a, a, a business analyst yes. uh, at ADP, and I was working on payroll and time, and it's all about, it's all about compliance. So I, I, I was the expert, I was, pretty, I, I was pretty much, I was knowing what to build, you know? Yeah. And for those kind of products, where the user is not forced to use it, uh, it's a very different mindset, and it's more of a learning process. So, so we, it's a discovery process. And to be honest, when, when you, you start with an idea, you don't know what the product is going to look like. So, and especially it's in the market to transform an idea into a product. It's a lean startup. They create very short feedback loops. Within a few okay. days, they build the thing. They validate the thing with real users. And then they learn from it and they, they iterate very fast. Okay, that's the idea of Lean Startup, to do yeah. these quick iterations and, and uh, evolve your product. Yeah, it's almost a scientific approach. You, b you make an hypothesis, you build, it works, it doesn't work, and you, you learn from it and you, you move on. Okay. Um, this sounds like something that's, uh, that, that goes very well with Mendix, so it's no uh, coincidence that you're sitting here. So tell me about how, how you discovered Mendix to do what you do. Yeah, so I was, um, I, I moved to New York, I got a new position, and I didn't have my uh, the team at the time. Mm -hmm. I was waiting to get a team. So I started to look at um, platform as a service to, to try to build product myself. Yeah. Because I had a, a, a painful experience, uh, because my first attempt to innovate a painful uh, experience. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was not painful, but it was a, a disappointment. Yeah. Uh, we had an idea, and of course it was the best idea in the world, sure. because it was the single one we had. And um, so we invested in it, we, we built a prototype, we put it in front of users, but not real users, you know, people you, you, you take on the street, you, you pay them like 50 bucks, so they are nice to you, they tell you they like it. Social, uh, socially desirable answers. You get. Yeah, and, yeah, and so we had very good feedback, and so we built a team, we hired a mobile developer because we didn't have a mobile developer at the time. And we launched the product, and people were using it, and then there was a huge drop in usage, and they were done. It was curious at the beginning for maybe 20 days, 25 days. Yeah. But after 30 days, they were done with the app. Okay. So it shouldn't have been built in the first place. So that's what we renounced in, in, uh, in prototyping. So we, instead of prototyping, we just build the, build the product first. And instead of having yeah. um, people in the street looking at a product, we put it in front of real users with the real life examples and experience. Okay. So you were looking for a better way. Yeah. And how did you find Mendix? Um, so it was a, a colleague uh, who knows a lot of technology um, at ADP, and it, it pointed me to three platforms. So I, I didn't start with Mendix because I have a MacBook, and I couldn't install it like right away. So I, I installed the other two, and I was... And which were those? I don't even remember, oh. but I was, <laughs> I was really... I, I was stuck very fast with them. They were, they were too, too technical. Um, and so my colleague insisted, and I he said, you should try Mendix. And so mm -hmm. I installed the VM, installed Mendix, and I've been... Yeah. And what I did is I rebuilt the app that was a disappointment, and yes. I did it in two weeks. And, and I didn't know... You did it in how much time? I mean, it was because there was a lot of iteration. It took like 10 months. Okay, yeah. So I knew right away what I wanted to build, so I don't know what it meant. 
Maybe it's not a fair to totally compare, but, honest but I, the thing was that I wasn't, I mean, I have a developer background, yeah, but I'm not able to do like this modern things, you know? So the fact that I could build and deploy in two weeks myself, that was incredible. Yeah. Right. So um, currently, you are producing an app a week. That's in the, in the title of yeah. your presentation. Um, so how do you do that? That, that, that? That's a tremendous production. Yeah, so what it means really, an app a week, it means that we dedicate a sprint to a specific product, mm -hmm. so for a week. And at the end of the week, we have to deliver yes. whatever it takes to real users. And so sometimes it's a new app, a brand new app, but sometimes it's also next iteration. On, okay. on another app okay. because we, we so received feedback. So a new version of an existing app counts as well. Yeah, so we started in August and we now we have uh, 20 apps. Okay. We don't have uh, 45 <laughs> apps. Yeah. Um, how do you get ideas for that many apps? So it comes from various uh, people. So we have, I mean, the more you get ideas, the more you get ideas. That's kind of... Yeah. And so that we get ideas in the team. So the Meet Better app that you've seen it was from the team. Um, the manager survey it was in, uh, in partnership with the HR organization at ADP. And I'm working right now on the, on the mentoring uh, application. It's kind of a match. So you can you find a mentor if you're a mentee in the, in the enterprise mm -hmm. and vice versa. And this one is actually from ADP employees. There was um, a contest, uh, like a, a sort of Shark Tank. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've done a TV show. Shark Tank? Yeah, it's a, a TV show, so you show up with an idea and you have like investors. Oh, yeah. And so it was the winning idea um, at this uh, HR summit at ADP. So we're going to work on this idea. Yeah. Um, one of the properties of Mendix, uh, I'm told, is that uh, not just developers can, can uh, work on a product, but uh, many more people can because it's so easy to use. Mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, you're uh, an example of the latter because you have not a developer background. On the other hand, you're working solo. Um, why do you make that choice? Well, I was... Um, as good as solo, in this, this, this small team you're the only Yeah, I was, it was kind of natural in, in that format of a team. Um, because I'm the only, only one with really technical um, uh, skills. Okay. So we, have, we are all very specialized. And I mean, the, so the behavioral economist couldn't do that for sure. Um, so I think it would, it would probably slow us down if we, were, if, if, I, if we were a team of builders. Because we have a single code base. So... Um, yeah. There will be much more discussion in terms of design and objects and, and, and very detail and, and details. Yeah. So I have more independence and I, I think I can go faster. Could you sum up the properties of Mendix that make, make it fit for what you do? So for me, it's kind of amazing because um, what I do, uh, I was, I've, I've been doing a lot of UML modelization and, and so Java development, and it's like it's, it's a perfect fit for me because it reminds me the time I was an analyst and I was designing algorithms and to explain to the developer uh, what it was supposed to be, to yeah. do. And uh, now, once I'm done with my model, I just click on a button and it's, it's live. So is, is, that, is that all? I mean, uh, so, I, so what's amazing is that it's um, so it, there's a lot of, be of benefits. Mm -hmm. um, one is that I'm more creative, for sure, because I can iterate much faster. So um, I can have an idea of the design of the implementation on the Monday and on the Tuesday, mm, I don't like it anymore, I change it. Yeah. On the Wednesday, I don't like it anymore, I change it again. And I would have a developer, it would, it would kill me, I think, to, that I change so many things every day. So I, I think I'm more creative and also I take more risk because no, the risk is not high because I'm, I'm expected to fail. Once, when you try so many things, you, you just, 
we're expected to fail. So um, yeah. if, if so the I can working take on much more risk. Yeah, if and it turns also out to be no good, it's not a problem. Because yeah, it's the not a problem. Is low. Throw it away, and it's, we learn something about users when they don't like a product, also as well. Yes. Um, yeah, I think. Are the apps you develop highly appreciated inside the company? We had good feedback. Yeah, we had good feedback, and sometimes we implement things that are not very natural and that yeah. we wouldn't do in a traditional uh, implementation, mm -hmm. but that user really like. That was surprising. Example? So, so example, um, we had um, another survey that is live right now. So instead of rating your manager, it's all the leaders. They, they nominate, nominate people in the network to receive feedback from. Yeah. And this nomination, when you look at and when you imagine the implementation, it's like a selection of people. And so we don't know who they work with. So we cannot really help them. So they would have to search in a traditional design. They would have to look up like 10 people in a database of uh, 55,000 employees. And so what we did is we told them, OK, just leave the system right now. Go into your inbox, because your inbox knows well who you work with. You create a new email. You tap the name of the, all the people you want to get feedback from. Mm -hmm. You copy and you paste in Mendix, in our system in Mendix. And it's not natural at all. And they loved it. Because they know how to use the inbox. Yes. Perfectly. Yeah. That's their environment. So we try to, to go where they are instead of bringing new experiences to, to facilitate the process. Yeah. We don't want to give them more work. They, they have enough work. It's, it's uh, really early days so far, but um, the things you are doing, like, um, well, m get to better meetings, uh, rate managers and stuff, uh, could change the company. Do you expect them to? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the nature of the products themselves uh, could have a huge impact on the company. I mean, it's too early. We started 10 months ago. We yeah. are only four people. How much but time? The fact you? that we create this. And the surveys and all those initiatives uh, for productivity and, and, and feedback inside the company, uh, I think it could, it could drive a change, a cultural change. And as well also, so we've been uh, asking some uh, people to, to try our products. So I think it can also uh, improve the uh, employee engagement because they see what we build, they participate in a, in a process because they give us feedback. Yeah. So anyone in the company can participate. I think that's a good thing. Do your bosses expect you to change the company? Do they want you to? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not everyone, I don't know. No, no. Can, can you see any of, of such effects already? Or is it really too early days for that? Uh, it's too early. Okay. It's really too early. Yeah. Can you produce, keep producing apps at the same rate you're doing now? So at the beginning, um, we didn't really know what to build. So now we have a, a better vision of what we are building now. Yeah. So I think we're going to start to invest more time on existing apps because uh, we want, to, want them to start to interact with each other, to make something that is uh, intelligent. To like, can refer to the smart app in Mendix 7. Um, and, and so we probably, it's going to slow down uh, for sure, the, the rate. Yeah. 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 Okay. Except if we get, and we're waiting for another builder that could yeah. work in parallel with me. Oh, maybe yeah. you're uh, uh, enlarging your team. Yeah, that, after that, all. that would be the only way to, yeah. to keep up with the rate, the pace. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any problems you see on the horizon? So what I see is that to, to, to go, to build the MVP, we've been taking some shortcuts and made some trade-offs using what's out, out of the box in Mendix. So we used a very, uh, like the theme that is out of the box. We didn't change anything. We, in the team, we don't have a graphic designer. We don't have... Uh, a web developer, so I use really the standard things, and I pick sometimes uh, widgets in the App Store. Yeah, so but you're a really bare bones app that way. Yeah, yeah. but so it's, it, it might be good enough for the the f three first sprints, but at some point you want to have a nicer nicer app, 
and you look into details, and if it, that involves like a, to develop a custom widget, or it's going to be much more uh, time consuming and much more expensive. So as we get closer to the, the, the final version of the product, it's going to be, it's going to cost more. Yeah, and maybe hire a graphic designer. Uh, or yeah, or a web developer, or yeah. having, I mean, I don't know. No. <laughs> and how about maintenance? So maintenance is a challenge as well. A challenge as well. Uh, we because if you because produce so many apps, so we have more and more apps every week, pile up. and more and more users. So that's more uh, responsibility. Um, so that's why we need to to duplicate my role, and so there's someone that could take care of the maintenance maintenance while someone can still build new apps. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Mendix Seven already. Uh, does that bring anything for you? Yeah, you it expect? goes exactly in the, in the, in the right direction. Uh, that's what we've been trying to do uh, from the start. So go where the user is. So for us, it's more right now. It's more the inbox, so in Outlook, um, and we try to be contextual and we 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 just reach them through the inbox, just one click or two clicks, and they're done with the interaction. They don't have to remember any destinations because we, we go to them. Yeah. yeah. OK. So I'm, I'm glad to see Medic 7. I'm excited to, to try it. Let's find out, find out if there are questions from the audience. Is there anybody who would like to ask a question to Nicolas Delors? There's one. I'll bring you the microphone. Hang on. <coughs> Would you please rise and tell us who you are? Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, it's working. I'm uh, Sami Boydaini. I work at the uh, uh, I saw that one of your colleagues is a, a field trial researcher. What does he or she do? Yeah, so what she does is she, <laughs> she, um, she basically finds a group of users inside uh, our company to prepare them to try new, new products. And so then they, she presents the products to them. Uh, she helps them if they have questions. And once they're done with the product after a few weeks, she reached back to them and, and gathered feedback. And then she compiled all the feedback and presented to us in our sprint review uh, so we can uh, make a decision on our design. I'll give you the mic once more. Yeah. It's a kind of product owner. I mean, Comparable. it's. It's not exactly the same. I see the product owner as the one person that uh, works with all the stakeholders. Uh, so she's more oriented to the users themselves. Yeah. Thank you. And the fact that you have one builder, that, that's yourself, and uh, one field trial researcher, does that mean that you devote as much time to building as to field trials? Yeah, absolutely. So every, um, every week, so I deliver a new product, and she delivers to a new group of users. Uh, so, so that's we can, really we run important in, in, stuff. In parallels, there are more multiple uh, research going on. Yeah, but each week she focuses on a specific uh, uh, product yeah. as well. OK. Yeah. More questions, please. Here's one at the front. There you go. Hi, uh, my name is Chang Phillips. I have a question. Since um, in ADP, do you have other departments who are developing apps, mobile apps, or are you, are you the only one? So we have a lot of IT at ADP. We have like 5,000 IT people building products, uh, cloud-based solution for our clients. And they use open source, different kind of frameworks. Uh, but we decided to to be completely uh, independent in this team. And uh, how, how does that work? How do you work with them? Are you competing with each other? Do you feel tension? No, there's uh, no are competition. You faster, slower? It's, um, it's a very different field. 
uh, it's not it's not the core business. So we try to to explore uh, new spaces. So there's no competition at all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. More questions for Nicholas. Uh, one more. Please tell us who you are. Hello, I'm Ronald Katerselz. Um, could you advise using Mendix for your car product? Because now you use Mendix only as a side product. Um, and as you say, you have 5,000 people working on the core product. But, well, do you envision using Mendix for the core product? Good question. Well, uh, not, not yet, for sure. No, that's not the, the strategy. Why not? Uh, it's not my call. Not your call? No, 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 no. OK, that's clear. I mean, we, we have our own uh, data cloud. We have a lot of infrastructures, too. So it's like, it's like way But if they ask you, me. do you think it could be done? Could be done to develop. I mean, you can develop any products on yeah. Mendix, I think. So I mean, it's, not a, it's a matter of strategy. It's not a matter of feasibility. And, and if you're successful in what you do, they might just ask you. Yeah, but yeah. I remember the slides of we have the mod one and mod two in terms of development. So maybe we could expand to the, the one that is more innovative. Yeah. But the, the core business, I mean, we have still have some mainframe systems that run the payroll. OK. We are not going to run a suitable. payroll. We're not going to run a payroll in Mendix. No. Sure. OK. Uh, Any more questions? No more hands? Okay, in that case, I thank you, Nicholas. Thank you.